Well, hi there. I'm here today with one of the coolest animals I've ever interacted with, and that is Archimedes, the Western Screech Owl. Because we want to talk to you about owls. Archimedes comes to us from Utah's Reptile Adventures, which that might seem funny because this is a bird, but uh, if you're not a long-term follower of our channel, then I have terrible news to break to you, which is that birds are reptiles. As it turns out, crocodiles are more closely related to birds than they are to lizards and snakes. Birds are the direct descendants of the dinosaurs. So birds are very literally living dinosaurs, and that is stinking rad. And when it comes to owls, owls are one of the coolest of all the living dinosaurs. I mean, these these are among the few living dinosaurs that don't embarrass the extinct dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex. I, I have so many things I want to share with you about owls. One, one thing that a lot of people are aware of, and you'll probably see a few times as we film that Archimedes here will flap his wings and you won't hear a sound. And that's because owls are silent flyers. Uh, they're nocturnal animals, which means uh, they're moving around in the dark. And hearing for nocturnal animals is one of the most important senses. And we'll talk about owl hearing in a minute because it's amazing. But yeah, I'm talking about you. But they fly in total silence, which allows them both to sneak up on their prey and to still hear their prey clearly while they're flying. One of the things that you know about owls is that they can turn their heads a long way. And this is true. They can't spin it all the way around. That's actually a misconception but they can turn their heads much farther than most animals. And there's a very funny reason for this. The reason is that their eyes are too big. Owls, uh, even though they are primarily going to be hunting by sound, which we'll talk about again here in just a moment, they're, they're still somewhat visual predators and seeing in low light is difficult. Birds across the board have large eyes and nocturnal animals tend to have larger eyes than diurnal animals. Well, owls have absolutely colossal eyes. You can't tell how large their eyes are because for one thing, you can't see how big their head is because it's covered in feathers. So it looks much larger than it actually is. Showing off their cool head spinning ability right now. Archimedes, are you trained for this? You're so cool. You are so cool. Those eyelids, I love this thing. The eyes are so big in the head of an owl that there is no space and no weight accommodations because when you fly, having a huge amount of weight at the front of your head, uh, that throws off everything as far as being able to fly. That's actually a lot of the reason that birds have beaks instead of toothy jaws is because beaks are a lot lighter. And so taking weight off of your head is very advantageous when it comes to flight. Their eyes are so large that they can't have muscles big enough to move those eyeballs. And so owls are always staring straight ahead. They cannot turn their eyes at all. In cartoons and stuff, you'll see them look around. They cannot do this. And the only way for them to be able to see what's behind them, like if you wanted to see what's behind you, you just turn your head as far as it'll go and then you rotate your eyes. Well, an owl can't do that. So it needs to be able to turn its whole head. And that's also why they're doing funny little gyrations with their head all the time is because they can't just move their eyes and make subtle adjustments. They got to make whole head adjustments anytime they want to see from a slightly different angle than before. And that is so awesome. I told you they had cool ears and owl ears are one of my favorite things to share with people. Um, when you listen, you know, you could be in a room and you could be blindfolded and somebody could be making a sound and you could pretty well pinpoint exactly where they are. And the reason that you can do this is because you have two ears. And, and what you're doing is you're triangulating, which is just that the sound that leaves an object if it's say off to one side of you, it's going to hit this ear just slightly before it hits this ear. And even though you would have difficulty doing the math, your brain is very good at computing exactly what that difference is and figuring out exactly where that, that source of sound came from. And this works very well on a two dimensional plane, which is really the only one that matters very much for you. But for an owl, it's a whole other world because they fly. 
So they live not only in a left to right world, but also an up down world. And they've got two ears just like you. So they can hear if it's coming from this side or this side just fine. But up and down gets funny because it'll still, if it's above you, it'll hit both ears at about the same time. Except owl ears are weird. They have asymmetrical ears. They have one ear that points up and one ear that points down. And because of this, they can triangulate not only left and right, but also up and down in a three-dimensional space. And that's stinking rad. So, I, I don't think that there's any question that owls are awesome. They're awesome. But a big question is, are they good pets? I mean, Harry Potter's got one. Is an owl the right pet reptile for you? And yeah, you heard me right about that. We actually have a whole video on this. I, I told you a little bit about it already, but if you want to understand what I'm talking about when I say that the owl is a pet reptile, make sure to check out that video right there. And we're going to look at owls generally because I'm not sure how many owls we're realistically ever going to have on this channel. So we're going to talk about owls as a group and not just the western screech owl like this one. The specific owls available to you will largely be regionally determined. but there are some overarching similarities. And so when we make this score, it is talking about owls across the board, owl of them. We're gonna break down owls into our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. Let's start with handleability. Uh, we give owls an overall score of three out of five for handleability. And actually, oh, one thing I want to start with when it comes to handling an owl or really any flighted bird is that they're unreasonably light. Uh, when, you, when you're talking about some of the, the bigger owls, I mean, you're going to be able to feel it. But this owl, which is a western screech owl, honestly, I'm not sure that this would feel very different if I were just wearing the glove. Uh, birds, until you've handled a flighted bird, you just can't even fathom how uh, just unreasonably light they are. And part of that is due to their, their hollow bones and their other weight reducing structures like, like a beak. Part of it also is the fact that they're heavily feathered. And so when you see a bird without feathers, you realize that they're nowhere near as big as they appear to be. And you know, and like earlier on, we were talking about how uh, far they can turn their neck, which is absolutely baffling because it looks like they've got no neck at all. But when you see birds without feathers, they've actually got huge, long, giant necks. And so it's not quite as shocking that they can turn it that far. But they are really amazing to handle. It's, it's quite an experience. And I definitely recommend at some point in your life that you handle a flighted bird, even if you decide that a flighted bird isn't the right pet for you. When it comes to owls specifically, if they're imprinted on you as a baby, they can actually be pretty good when it comes to handling. That doesn't mean that you're going to snuggle with an owl. I want to make this very clear. The owl is going to stand on your hand and you darn well better have some sort of heavy leather glove on. Uh, it is possible in some instances to handle them without it. And as long as everything goes fine, great. I mean, sort of like you can handle a cobra as long as nothing goes wrong. But if they decide that, yeah, I think I'm just going to hold on a little bit tighter today, it's going to be an awful day. Not as bad as the day can go with the cobra, but still a very unpleasant day. Generally speaking though, owls aren't really very handleable for anything beyond what you see me doing right now. I mean, you, you can carry them around, you can, you can show them off, um, you know, they'll perch, they'll poop, which is something that birds generally do all the time. Uh, you know, something I love about reptiles is reptiles tend to poop about one time for every time they eat. And uh, so for snakes, that might be just like once a week, once every other week that they poop. That's great when you're handling them, unless it's something like a, an indigo snake, which poops all the time. Or, you know, lizards poop about once a day, which stinks compared to, uh, you know, most snakes. Birds, though, they're pooping like every few minutes. So if you're going to handle a bird for any length of time, expect a turd. And we'll take care of that right now. After a little while, they're going to have had enough of standing there and they'll let you know by trying to fly away. And, you know, they've done this before 
uh, you know, a well-trained bird will be able to get itself righted again. In this case, fortunately for him, we had a table he could just sit on. But uh, they will only sit on your hand for so long before they decide to test their ability to get away. When it comes to care, uh, this is where things start to fall apart for owning an owl. We give owls an overall score of one out of five for care because it sucks. Let's start with the enclosure. Uh, the size of the enclosure that you're gonna need is going to vary dramatically based on the size of the owl that you have. For some very small owls, like this screech owl, you're gonna need an enclosure that's probably kind of similar to what you might need for a tegu, just taller. But when it comes to the larger owl species, they're gonna need a room in your house like some of the giant monitors, except it can be outdoors, so you basically need to build a shed for them. I said they can be housed outdoors, and that is true throughout the range of most of the birds that we're talking about. So if it's an owl that's native to your area, it can probably live outdoors in your area year round. And that is one of the really cool things about endothermic organisms that is not true about reptiles. Uh, you know, most reptiles, especially exotic reptiles, can't be housed outdoors in most places. And birds, uh, not necessarily tropical birds, but, but native owl species oftentimes can, and that's pretty cool. That's really the only upside to endotherms, so otherwise it's just all terrible. One thing to keep in mind when you have an owl is that for about an hour a day, you're gonna need to let it outside of its typical enclosure to just hang out outdoors. And uh, especially if you've got a small owl, you're gonna need to supervise it for that whole time because other birds, even other predatory birds, are gonna harass it, might eat it. You don't wanna come out and just find your perch. That's terribly disappointing. They also need to be fed daily. And when we're talking about smaller owls like this, it's actually gonna be multiple times daily. Uh, smaller endothermic organisms tend to burn through energy even faster than larger endothermic organisms. So expect to have to feed your owl several times a day on whole prey items like birds and rodents. Small small owls like this in the wild, I mean, they're eating basically everything they can catch. I mean, they're, they're eating insects, they're eating rodents, they're eating reptiles, they're eating birds. They're very opportunistic little hunters and that's cool. So a broad diversity of largely vertebrate prey is probably what's going to be best for your owl. They've got these awesome talons and, and this totally bodacious beak that is hooked and all of these things are perfectly adapted for hunting and tearing apart food. But in captivity, they do tend to get sort of overgrown. And as a result, you periodically will need to trim those nails in that beak. And as I understand it, that's no picnic because they don't like it. Uh, so expect an occasional wrestling match with claws and, well, talons and beaks of prey just trying to fight back the whole time. Sounds like fun. Something else to keep in mind is that you're going to need good places for your owl to stand all the time. If, if where they're standing isn't adequately clean or, or you know, as I was saying, if your perches aren't adequate, they can end up getting an infection called bumblefoot, which can actually lead to their death. So this is something you need to be extremely careful about with really any sort of bird, but especially with birds of prey. And here's something else. I, I told you things with endotherms are not good. One of the things is that they need to eat a lot. Uh, every day, you know, when they're small, multiple times a day, they can starve to death in a very short period of time, which means that you cannot leave them alone for very long at all. They need a lot of daily maintenance, not just feeding, but you know, they need to be taken outside. But literally, if you don't, if you're not there to take care of them for a day or two, you can just come back to a dead owl. And I've heard that's sub awesome. Seems, <laughs> it's just terrible, it's terrible. Endotherms are awful because of this. Yeah, you hear me. He's like, you're not gonna leave me, are you? Endotherms are terrible because you can kill them so quickly they cannot be left alone. 
And so that's why they get that score. It's also why they get a one out of five for hardiness. To get birds of prey, you often need to jump through a lot more hoops. And, and, and that's really a good thing because this isn't something you want to learn through trial and error. You'll kill who knows how many birds. People who keep birds of prey generally do some sort of an apprenticeship. They, they spend years and years preparing for their birds. And even so, even experienced falconers occasionally lose birds. Uh, and the reason for this is just there are so many things that can go wrong and they can go wrong so quickly. They can end up breaking feathers that are still vascularized and bleed out. I mean, you know, and this is something that can happen easily when they're being confined. And there are also various illnesses that they can get that can kill them, uh, like Bumblefoot that we already discussed and many more. Uh, there's just all sorts of accidents that can happen. They could just crash into a wall and break their... The things that happen to birds sometimes. They need constant supervision. Just, you know, in a lot of cases, multiple times a day, you need to interact with them and check on them and make sure they're okay and take care of them. The thing is like, in some ways, having a smaller owl is more practical because they need less space, but at the same time, they need more maintenance, more constant care. They can crash more quickly. They're more fragile. It, it, they're just, a, they're a nightmare. They are a nightmare when it comes to keeping them alive. They're also not easy to get, which is why for availability, we give them a score of one out of five. Depending on the species of owl that you get, it is actually possible to find a breeder, though it can be very difficult to find a breeder, but if you, it is possible to find a breeder and just buy an owl. So you can live the life of Harry Potter. There aren't very many breeders and they don't produce a lot of owls. So that's gonna be one one difficulty. For the most part though, you're gonna need permits to keep owls, especially if they're the kinds of owls that you're gonna be able to house outdoors. And to get these permits, you're gonna need to be a falconer, or you're gonna need to have legitimate educational purposes for it. And while these aren't ridiculously expensive, they are hugely time consuming. You know, they're gonna take a lot of effort and a lot of really years. And eventually, they will fly off on you. You got it, you got it. Do you hear how quiet that was though? For most species though, you are gonna need permits. And like I said, those permits are very time consuming to get. Um, so while they are available, it is possible. It's one of the hardest animals, at least the hardest reptiles that we've talked about to get a hold of, probably the hardest. A big thank you to all of you who support us on Patreon. I decided to become a patron of Clint's Reptiles because of his vast knowledge and boundless enthusiasm. A perfect combination. I also love that he is very open about the pros and the cons of keeping the reptiles that he features in his videos. I've been keeping reptiles for decades, but I still learn a lot from Clint's videos. Clint once featured a gorgeous red-sided garter snake from Don's Garter Snakes in one of his videos, and... I contacted Don, learned that he lived fairly close to me, and I was able to pick up this trio of beautiful red-sided garter snake juveniles from him at a recent expo. I think early access to Clint's videos and all the other benefits of being a patron are awesome, but honestly, I think the most important reason to become a patron is to send this message. I love what you're doing, and I want to do my part to make sure that you can keep doing it. So if that's how you feel about Clint's reptiles, I encourage you to become a patron too. There's one more reason I have to mention. Reptiles are stinking rad! But mostly we are just grateful for you and all the things that you make possible for us. When it comes to upfront costs, we give owls a score of one out of five. Like I said, there are some breeders from which you can buy exotic owls. Those are gonna be ridiculously expensive. If you want a less expensive owl, then that is possible. You're either going to have to capture one or, or some people are producing captive bred native owls, but you will need those fancy permits, which don't cost a ton, but they do take a lot of a lot of time and a lot of effort. The enclosures and other equipment are really going to be what's going to be the most expensive. And, th and that's going to vary a lot depending on the size of the owl that you get. For a big owl, you're literally going to need something the size that you would need for a good size monitor lizard, which are prohibitively expensive enclosures. You're gonna to have to build it yourself, you're gonna need a room in your house, or to build a shed for it. 
incredibly large. And then there's a whole lot of other equipment involved as well. The Mew, which is the shed that we've already talked about. Also anklets and jesses, scales to weigh them, a bath pen, a weathering perch, something called a hawk box, a fancy pants glove like this. It all kind of adds up. And don't worry, over the years where you're training to have an owl, there will be experienced people that will be able to tell you exactly where to get these things and exactly how much they cost. Right on the glove. None of these things, by the way, will be down in the description. We don't have Amazon links to any of this stuff. You're also going to need to have a large supply of frozen rodents, birds, and other feeders on hand when you get the owl. If you think you can get an owl and then order a shipment of that stuff, it'll be dead before they get there. So this is literally an upfront cost with owls. And uh, we can give you a link to those, actually. And that is why, overall, we give owls the worst score we've ever given any reptile on this channel, 1.4 out of 5. They get this truly abysmal score, which is it's sad because, I mean, Harry Potter, he always looks so happy with his owl, right? And you just put it in a little birdcage and carry it around. But apparently that's not true. They are some of the coolest animals on the planet. I can't tell you how much I have enjoyed this experience being here with an owl, getting to look into those amazing eyes, getting to just watch its cool behavior, getting to hear that little sound it just made. This has been an amazing experience. And I am so glad this owl isn't mine. They make horrible pets. Just, it's, I mean, this is, this is a, a terrible, terrible pet. So bad. Uh, really, like, if you are not a wizard, or ridiculously committed to having an owl, then an owl is probably one of the worst reptile pets you could possibly get. Sorry to ruin your day. As always, like and subscribe. We hope to see you real soon. You know, there are some things, like if I got to snuggle a tiger one time, that'd be enough, right? I don't need to get my own tiger. I, for the rest of my life, I could tell the story about how one time I snuggled a tiger. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Good. Is that pretty good? Yeah. Why? Is it like wink? Um, yeah, but just like this owl. Like, it to the point that it was like unnerving. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Give it your best shot. You look either high or like that's your smolder. <laughs> Both. I'll be darned. You are amazing. And I do want to pet you. This is a terrible temptation. Oh, you are so, oh my goodness. Look at those eyes. Well, this is one of the coolest things I've ever done. What a special creature. Look at those blinking eyelids. You're not real. <laughs> you are hilarious. It's so animatronic right now. Oh, looks. yes. It's so weird. I never realized how accurate all the birds were at the tiki room. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it, you know, they'll, you know, Jason's My having fault. a crappy day. <laughs> <laughs> and it's aromatic, too. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah. You know, oh, crap. <laughs> Hopefully I have enough poop jokes for an entire video with an endothermic owl. I bet, I bet you've never cleaned up poop while an owl watched you before. Yeah, or, or directly underneath <laughs> the constantly pooping owl. Lose birds. It just, it's part of the process. Let's let Jason get back in here. Hey, but the, the quantities are getting smaller. And, and the nice thing is you've still got... Wet Clorox whiteness from before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't even dry. You are... You, no, this is the best. <laughs> yeah, this is your own fault. Don't look at me cross-eyed. <laughs> he can't. He literally cannot. <laughs> this is the best day ever. Since I'm not the crap cleaner. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, dude. Oh, dude.
hear how quiet that was? Everything's silent. All of them. You are perfection. Like, there's just no making that any better. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Keep it together. <laughs> Keep it together. I might cry. Oh.